my generation. Motto, the love of Christ compels me. Pledge, present arms. Loving the Lord Jesus, I promise to take an active part in the youth ministry of the church, doing what I can to help others and to finish the work of the gospel in all the world. Order arms. The AY song. Apprentice youths are we from every land and sea. Together we pray and work and play in happy harmony. We are prepared to share with others everywhere. A message of love from God above to show the world we care. Adventist youths are we. Adventist youths are we. Adventist youths. of joy and peace.
Good afternoon and happy Sabbath everyone. Welcome to our AY program this afternoon. Thank you for spending time with us as we focus on today's theme, which is who cares? So firstly, what does it mean? What does it mean to care? Now the dictionary has multiple definitions of the meaning of the word care. It could be the provision of what is necessary for the health, welfare, maintenance and protection of someone or something. It could also be to feel concern or interest or to look after and provide for the needs of someone or something. As we can see from these definitions, caring involves action. It involves us putting out effort. Safe to say, it's a phrase that is used very liberally. We can care about a lot of things our family, our jobs, our safety. But when we say we care, how do we show it? What do we actually do? Now, there are numerous examples of persons who cared for others in the Bible, but the best example of all is Jesus himself. Caring for others was his top priority. In fact, he came to earth to die on the cross simply because he cared so much. He loved us so much. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. He was concerned about us. He attached great importance to our salvation and redemption. It was a task that he alone could complete and one that he saw through to the very end. 1 Peter 2.24 tells us, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness for by his wounds you are healed. 2 Corinthians 5.21 also says, He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Because of his death and resurrection, Christ is still caring for us, interceding on our behalf. Now, whilst he was on earth, he also demonstrated care. There are many examples in the Bible where he was concerned about the physical needs of others. Matthew 14 tells us about Jesus caring for a large crowd of people. He notes that he felt compassion for them and he healed their sick. He also went on to feed the 5,000. He was concerned that the crowds had no food. He met their physical need by performing the miracle with the five loaves and two fish. The Greek word for compassion used here really means that he felt a deep amount of sympathy and love for them to the point that he had to do something. Isn't this what real care is? But Jesus did not only care about physical needs, but he also cared about their spiritual needs as well. The Samaritan woman, when she came to the well to have her physical needs met, left with something far more important. Her spiritual needs were met. She had an encounter with Christ and her life was changed forever. Jesus told her that whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Jesus provided care on many different levels, physical, emotional, and spiritual. And as we seek to show others that we care, we all have to remember that care is a, a verb. It's an action word. It requires us to get up, to do, and to go, to follow Christ's example, and to really show what it means to care for others. Now, during this COVID-19 pandemic, I know it's not so easy to show that you care, but we can all use the tools and resources available to us to do so at this time. So not only can we call and check in on friends and family and even community members, but we can also deliver hampers and stop to those in need. And we can spiritually check in on them as well. Let them know that you are praying for them. Ask them if you can pray with them. Send them encouraging Bible texts or quotes. These are just small ways of showing that you care about every aspect of that person, just as Christ cares about every aspect of them. We need to be physically moved to impact those that we care about on different levels. Let's care not only about their physical and emotional well-being, but their spiritual as well. 
As Adventist youth, let us represent Christ and reflect his character in a world that truly needs it right now. So the next time you say, I care about you, really think about it. Don't just say it, but show it. And as you participate in today's AY program, I truly hope that you are blessed as we learn more about Didn't have to leave the glory of heaven, but you became a simple man. You didn't have to serve the poor and afflicted, but you touched and healed their brokenness. No greater love has been given. You became the ultimate sacrifice. Creating me the heart of a servant. Let this be my soul's desire. Show me how to love and the true meaning of the world. Teach me to sacrifice, expecting nothing in return. Away, becoming more like you each and every day. My words are not enough. Please show me how to love. I saw a bruised and battered woman with the hungry children on the streets. Then I heard you ask in that still small voice. What have you done for the least of these? Lord, consume me with a burning fire That melts away my complacency Let me be moved with love and compassion And someone will find a way in me Show me how to Expecting nothing in return I want to give my life away Becoming more like you each and every day My words are not enough Please show me how to love
Well, this is an effort from the Capital Seventh Day Adventist Church again. We are going out this evening, Sabbath, the 7th of May 2020, to our community to distribute some fruit bowls to the people in the community, our elderly in the, from the church, and our elderly in the community as well. So we pray that this will be a blessing to them and to encourage them that even though they are inside, there are still people on the outside, people from the Captivate Seventh Day Adventist Church who cares about them. So we really want to thank God for this opportunity. It's a blessed opportunity that we are using so that after this is over, we can meet these people with the word of God. There's none of who talking here. Yours truly, from a bomb. But it is me, I need to feel. It's me talking here. It's me, and none of your friend here. But I look like I'm here. Jesse, this is my friend Jesse here. But the two are we need to feel I'm here. Yeah, but well, evening time, this is a lot wrong talking here. Yours truly, also known as Fama Brown. But they hear what's going on. You see how my eye looking and looking like I now get up. But is my eye busting because my corn so tall in the garden. And they say how corn don't grow so tall without chemical. This corn one now show like here from a whole corn patch all in the back of me. Left, right and center is corn. Watch corn. Corn as far as you could see. Only corn. Boy, corn could grow without chemical. All you have to do, you have to take care of the corn. And you have to treat it properly and give it the good soil. If you ain't treated properly, the corn would not grow properly you have to take care of the corn you understand what i'm saying and if you want anything else to grow in the garden you need to take care of it so hear what i'm saying saying take care i hear plenty of people saying today that nobody in care you know plenty of my friends saying that nobody in care today but i want to refute that statement because i want to tell all you that i care and we care who we all may be thinking are talking about? We. We is the organization from the Seventh day Adventist Church. And I want all you to know today that we, the Seventh day Adventist Church, care. Care for who? Not just for the members, but we care for non members out of the Seventh day Adventist Church. And we care for the world during this COVID 19 period of. of, of um, all kind of different things taking place people lost in their jobs people losing their homes people losing because they didn't have money to pay for rent people losing um a lot of things people lose to it uh, especially lives i want to tell us this evening that before the covid 19 in the period of the covid 19 and after the period of the covid 19 the seventh day adventist church will always be a caring church has always been and is a caring church for example during the COVID-19 or before the COVID-19, the Seventh-day Adventist Church is known for giving out a lot of things. For instance, we do free medical checkups, like testing your pressure, testing your sugar. We do free clothes distribution. The Seventh-day Adventist Church care. Yes, if you get in contact with any one of the Seventh-day Adventist Church from the four, well, I belong to one of the Church is called the um, La Fortin District, it's a Labra, it's a Cochrane, it's a Hollywood, it's a Captiville, it's a Coromandel, it's a Sea, just all the four seas in the district, all about the place. And beyond four seas district. If you go to any one of them, or you get in contact with any one of the leaders in the Seventh day Adventist Church from La Fortin and beyond, and you ask them for any one of your needs, we will try our best to see if we could, we could assist you. We have something called ADRA, which is Adventist Disaster Relief Agency. In case of emergency, was pertaining to natural disasters, we do assist. Yes, the Sunday Adventist Church do care. We have hospital called um, the one down in Kokorit. Yes, the Sunday Adventist Church do care. We have um, 
homes for the age, where we just see for the age people. Yes, the Seventh-day Adventist Church care. We do care for our citizens and the community of our country and our brethren and sisters. Yes, we have been doing a lot of work because we care as a church, as Seventh-day Adventist brethren. We do care. You understand? So during this COVID-19, you could have called any one of the elders in the Seventh-day Adventist Church if you wanted food, if you wanted prayer, if you wanted counseling, something troubling you, if you lose a family, you wanted to do a funeral service online, we could have done it. And even after this COVID-19, we are still in the caring business because we love the community and we love people. We in here because we're here to baptize people and we want to make up numbers in the church. No, we're here because we care, because God cares. That is why we're here. That is why he put we here, because we care. All you understand what I'm saying? So we love all you and I want all you to know, stay tuned and stay connected because we care and if you need anything, I want you to know. Visit any one of the Seventh-day Adventist church or make a call if you can get a number. You are counseling, you need prayer, you need help, you need Bible study, you need baptism, whatever you need. Make a call to the Seventh-day Adventist church. And if, let me take front, you can call my number, 269-4063. I'm making the start. Make a call and you could call me and I could get on to the relevant people or I could do my personal distribution because we care. You understand? So have a blessed day and may God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. I heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. But you don't really care for music, do you? Well, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor four, the major lift, the bad for king composing, hallelujah, hallelujah. Strong, but you needed proof. You saw her bathing on the roof. Her beauty and the moonlight overthrew you. She tied you to her kitchen chair. She broke your throne and she cut your hair. And from your lips, she drew the hallelujah.
Hakima Ghanis from the Cochrane Seventh-day Adventist Church. Today, as we focus on the importance of caring for each other, special emphasis must be placed on our elderly and shut-in members. Studies have proven that diminishing physical fitness, energy levels, and overall health, or the lack thereof, can result in profound shifts in mental and emotional states. This is especially true for shut-in members. Jesus, in his earthly ministry, cared for, ministered to, and in some cases, even implored the help of our elderly men and women. For example, Zachariah and Elizabeth, the parents of John the Baptist, who herald the coming of Jesus' ministry on earth. While most of our shut-in members feel the hurt of the inability to attend church, and even more so as we face this global crisis, we must find ways to show them that we care. Our Creator is very concise on how He expects us to care for our elderly members. In 1 Timothy 5.8, He says, Anyone who does not provide for their relatives, and especially for their own household, has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Leviticus 19.32 says, Stand up in the presence of the elders, show respect for the elderly, and revere God. I am the Lord. God requires us to care for each other, but more so our elders. Here are four ways in which we can do so. One, help them feel useful and needed. Two, keep them active, physically and mentally. Three, keep them connected with family and community. And four, keep them spiritually fed. In doing these things and more, we can be sure that we are following God's command and that He
Life can be an overwhelming experience. Between work, school, church, spouses, children, our own personal time with God, and the ever-growing list of responsibilities that we have to take care of each day, sometimes we find ourselves in a dark place and we ask ourselves, who even cares? But what does it mean to care? It means that no matter the circumstances, we always ensure that someone else's needs are before our own. What if I told you that I know someone who is capable of taking care of each and every person on the earth, all its other inhabitants, and even the planet itself? Proverbs 18.24 says, There is a friend who sticketh closer than a brother. And in Isaiah 43.2, he promises that when thou passest through the waters, he will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. He will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou must go, and he will guide thee according to his words in Psalm 32, 8. He cares so much for us that he blesses us with what we need and so much more. Higher than the highest human thought can reach is God's ideal for us. This caring and compassionate Savior and friend calls us to care for others. John 15, 12 says, this is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. And Matthew 5.18 says, Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Christ commands us to take care of our friends, family, neighbors, and strangers, especially the poor and needy. When we take care of the physical and emotional needs, it opens up a way for them to experience God's love and then their spiritual needs are taken care of. We can show others we care simply by spending time with them and checking up on them from time to time. We can also share kind words and the blessings that God has granted us, material or otherwise. Praying for others is another great way to care for someone. God cares for us despite how many times we have disobeyed Him. We do not deserve His love or His compassion but we receive it every second of every day. The next time you find yourself in a dark place, remember that our Creator cares, and do not forget to take others as well so that many people can experience the love of God. One way or another, but life is not always fair. How many times have you sat hot and bothered and said to yourself, who cares? There was no answer right then and there, so you threw your hands into the air and asked again, who cares? Well, you may not remember, so here's a reminder that our Lord and Savior, the Creator, the Maker, who sent His Son to die for us, who continues today to provide for us, has promised to take the weight off your shoulders, whether they be pebbles or boulders, for He will give us rest. Casting all your cares on Him, for He cares for you. All this and eternity too, if we just do as He asks us to, we're assured peace after the stress, but what about everybody else? Well, love your neighbor as yourself. How can I do that, I hear you ask. Thankfully, it's an easy task. Share God's words so that others may be saved. Offer comfort when they are in pain. When they think of a friend, let that friend be you. Remember his love in all that you do. From the lilies in the valley to the birds who sing true and the trees and the animals who must be given their due. Treat them with respect and help their growth, as they are proof of God here on earth. And when your heart grows weary, and you think, who cares? You will remember that God is there. <laughs>